Father, we just thank you so much. No Hello, precious partners and friends and those that are listening around the nation and around the country. Well, thank God for just another day. The Lord has kept us clothed and in our right mind, and we give him praise and glory uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I want to share with each and every one of you, I had a video that got removed. I was not aware uh, that people cannot share their views anymore. <laughs> I didn't know we were in a, a communist country or a socialism is not here yet. At any rate, as Brother Joel Osteen says, if you've been through any injustices or racism on your job uh, or any challenges, God will put the dots together uh, in the future and everything will work out for your good, according to Romans 8 and 28, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless your family. Love you. I want to dive right into uh, the Word of God, dealing with relationships. Now, you know I can't go wrong uh, talking and dealing with that. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all of our viewing audience and those that have uh, chimed in and those that are listening uh, around the country and around the nation. We ask that you would open up our prophetic ears to hear the word of God and apply it in every area of our life. Satan, you take your nasty hands off that man. You take your nasty hands off that woman. You take your nasty hands off that kingdom family. And we give you praise and glory in the matchless name of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been sharing that uh, so much has been going on around the country, around the nation, and certainly we pray uh, for all of our leaders. We pray for the Democrats, the Republicans, the Tea Party, Independent Party, Chief of Police, Sheriffs, those community leaders that are doing a phenomenal job, and certainly uh, the fivefold ministry, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, laborers in the vineyards. Listen, we need each other. We're certainly better together. And Jesus is the answer for hurting humanity and for this world today. You know, I share with people all the time, regardless of your position uh, in the earth realm, how much money you have, or what your status, what your title is, we're all going to die. We're all going to leave here. And what I'm discovering, uh, being on planet Earth uh, for this short period of time in light of eternity, that relationships are very important. And, uh, you know, I've never met someone on their deathbed uh, saying, hey, look at uh, the assignments that I was on on planet Earth. Look at my custom cabinets or look at my car and so forth. Uh, they want to see uh, their loved ones. They want to see those that are precious and dear to them. And so we were talking about when you're dealing with relationships, you got to insist on integrity. We live in a dog eat dog culture, and it seemed like everybody is uh, just concerned about themselves. And integrity is truthfulness, and it's doing what you say you will do. You know, my grandfather, remarkable man of God, went to be with the Lord many years ago, but he always used to say, Back in his day, they didn't have to do contracts. It was a handshake. And he says, son, mean what you say and say what you mean. You know, you got to demand it from yourself and you got to reward it even in others. Do the right by others. And, uh, you know, we call it the golden rule. And really, you know, you want to treat people the way you want God to treat you, according to Ephesians 6 and 8. In Romans chapter 12, verse number 10, the Bible says, Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love and honor and preferring one another. And I think that we have to be able to share. We've got to be able to communicate. We've got to be able to talk to one another. And we even have to be able to agree to disagree. Now, one of the things I like about being in California uh, you know, I've been around so many people, so many different backgrounds that you hear me share. My mother uh, was around diversity before the world was even propagated in this Babylonian system. People of all backgrounds, nationalities, uh, you know, and she taught us to be kind and to treat people uh, right in the name of the Lord Jesus. Because at the end of the day, we, are, we all hurt, we all bleed, we all deal with the uh, uh, situation, suffering and relationship problems and financial problems. But we need each other. What this world needs more than anything is the love of God. And then we have to learn how to reprove with sens sensitivity. We have to have sensitivity one to another. What I'm finding out, everybody is wired differently. You can't talk to everyone the same. Now, I grew up kind of old school. Uh, you know, there was only one rule. I don't care if you were half robot, half 
cat, whatever you said you are, was one rule in the house and you were going to comply. You were going to obey because if one got in trouble, we all got in trouble. And criticism does hurt, uh, you know, but you have to have people in your life that love you enough to bring corrective correction. That's one thing I, I miss about my grandfather. You know, he he, he loved you, but he if you were uh, wrong or you were doing something wrong, you said he was going to come to you love and he was going to bring that corrective correction even you know even though he gave it in love he was going to see how you were going to respond to it he always always said you got to master your reaction you can't take it personal and you got to take charge of your emotions and feeling and yet it's your personal responsibility to provide caution when you have friends and, and those that you love in your love circle uh in your circle of influence you know you should uh warn them uh, if they're living uh, destructive lifestyles, you've got to be able to tell them the truth. And again, you got to watch the tone, but you still have to be able to say it in truth because your instruction is their opportunity for promotion from God. The Bible says in, in Proverbs chapter 13 and verse number 18, it says, poverty and shame shall be, listen, to him or her that refuseth instruction. And as men and women of God, I'm certainly not an expert, but I am a student of the word, a lifetime learner. My grandfather used to say many years ago, he says, anytime you read the Bible, come empty and um, always be a lifetime learner. Always make those adjustments, grow, learn, get better uh, in the name of the Lord. And then he says, but he or she that regardeth reproof shall what? Uh, be honored. So again, uh, we have to be able, you know, if you have children, you have family, and uh, you have to be able to bring that corrective correction in the love, but you have to be able to do it with sen sensitivity. And I think that's what this culture and this world needs uh, more like never before. And then we got to learn how to celebrate those who celebrate you. A lot of times I've seen people that, you know, it's nothing wrong with saying thank you. It's nothing wrong with uh, acknowledging someone or, or being grateful or thankful. You know, I celebrate those that celebrate me and I even bless those that are kind. You know, oftentimes people may be rude to you on your job or mistreat you, but my mentors always say, it's not what somebody does to you, it's how you respond. And you just keep your smile on your face, you keep treating them well. And you know what, because God is really trying to build your spiritual muscles. And God, again, he'll work it all out in the future. Uh, you know, some call it karma, some call it the law of sowing and reaping. But listen, uh, if you treat people right, it will always come back to you. And those who recognize your worth deserve special recognition. Uh, even Jesus instructed his disciples to respect those who received uh, him. And he, he also talked about disconnecting or reject those that uh, rejected him. In other words, don't put God's speed uh, up on someone that's not interested uh, in the things of God. And then go where your contributions is celebrated. Jesus did. Listen to what he says in Matthew chapter 10 verses 11 through 13, and into whatsoever city or town you shall enter, listen to this, inquire who is in it uh, is worthy, and there abide till, listen, you go thence, and when you come into the house, I love this, salute it, and if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it, but if it's not worthy, let your peace return to it. In other words, God says, listen, you're in the business of blessing people and those that want to receive those blessings, you decree it, you declare it. Those that reject it, don't take it personal. Uh, usually there's some kind of uh, internal conflict going on with them. You know, I've discovered hurting people hurt people. And uh, so never take it personal when someone mistreats you or dogs you or dish you. It, it's not you. Uh, usually it's something that's going on uh, inside that individual. And then also talk it out. I, I believe that a lot of misunderstandings could be resolved with just one meaningful conversation. But most of the time, uh, people don't talk it out. Friendships die through neglect. And don't expect others to read your mind. A lot of times people get frustrated and mad at someone. Well, we're not mind readers. You know, uh, you, know you have to uh, confront and let someone know. Because uh, oftentimes people may not even know they offended you or, or, or there's an issue if you don't uh, share it or talk to them. Now, you know, once you go to them and they don't want to bring that healing and reconciliation, don't take it personal. Shake the dust off your feet. Keep moving forward and be productive uh, in the things of God. Your voice, you, you got to learn to voice your concerns over your offense or, or whatever. You, 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 you got to know when to speak up and you got to know when to also shut up. 
silence often waters the root of bitterness. So you got to talk it out. I see a lot of people, uh, even older people, people that uh, may have even died that have hurt them or, or they may have been through certain trauma and they, they didn't release it. You have to release those who hurt you, uh, regardless if your dad wasn't there, your mom wasn't there error. You went through some painful uh, situations or whatever the case may be. You know what? You got to let it go. You got to let it go for your sanity's sake. You got to let it go for your peace sake. And then you know what? God will work it out. We know that from Joseph. Remember, Joseph had to go through some horrible things. But you know what? At the end of the day, God finally worked it out in the name of the Lord. And somebody needs to hear that. Matthew chapter 18, we call it the Matthew 18 principle. Matthew chapter 18, verse number 15 says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trust, listen, sin against thee, he says, go tell them uh, his or her fault between thee and him alone. And if they shall hear thee, thou shalt gain thy brother. So the idea here is if a brother or sister has offended you, instead of blasting them on social media, uh, always approach him. This is the key. I've learned this through my mentors. You always approach with the spirit of meekness and gentleness. You have to have the right tone, <laughs> you know, and then, uh, you know, and then if they don't want to accept it, find someone that's not your homeboy, homegirl, someone that that's seasoned uh, and uh, that that loves uh, the things of God uh, and, and, and take them with you. And if they won't hear it, then you know what? When it says take it to the church, it doesn't mean stand up. Otherwise, we would never be able to get anything done. It means take it to the leadership uh, and then go from there. But again, we should be lovers and not fighters. Uh, we should always be trying to resolve things, that, you know, because how are we going to draw the world? How are we going to uh, say we're involved in soul winning and we can't even work together? Uh, we can't even go in dialogue. We can't even communicate with one another. And then, you know what? Resurrect hope in someone today. There's so many people that has lost hope. And you know what? Hope is like, hope is essential. It, it, it's like water. It's like breathing, you know. Uh, you need hope to cope. And when people lose hope, they use dope and every other thing that you can imagine. And Jesus is our hope. And hope is the expectation of favorable changes. I believe in hope. We preach a message of hope. Matter of fact, we are hope dealers in the name of Jesus. So don't permit someone you love to remain depressed or devastated by their present circumstances. There's a lot of times people go through depression, major depression, but you can bounce back from that. You know, you're not talking to someone that don't have any experience. You can bounce back. Now, sometimes people penalize you for what you've been through and, and use it against you. But that's one thing I love about God. He's not like that. And as human beings, many of you that are listening, uh, you have been through hell and back. You know, my grandfather used to say, it's not where you start in life, it's where you finish. And then remind them that Jesus Christ is still the healer and miracle worker in every circumstances of life. I'm so shocked and disheartened to see so many people that don't believe in miracles anymore. They don't believe in the supernatural power of God. Dearly beloved, we believe in an uncommon God that does uncommon things. He does the super. He puts the super on the natural where miracles can literally take place in the name of the Lord. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 15. Listen to what the Bible says. It says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you. Uh, listen, a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. And that's why I said it's, sad, it's a sad day in the country when we can't share and talk to people uh, that may even have a different view than you, or just have conversation and dialogue. You know that's a dangerous situation uh, because if people know they can't share and talk, then they will hide things, and you never know what's in a person's mind or in a person's heart. Uh, and I thank God if, if Christianity was like that, there's no way I would be a Christian. Uh, you know, if I was forced to be a Christian or I was bullied to be, oh no, Christ He knocks at the door. And then he's a gentleman. He he waits. He knocks at the door to your heart. And then he, he gives you an opportunity. Do you want to accept me or do you want to reject me? He's not like the uh, the DEA, you know. I don't care what kind of custom door you got there. Put a chain on there with a tractor trailer. That door is coming off. He doesn't force himself 
in, but we have to make a decision. That's why Joshua chapter 24, verse number 15, he says, listen, as for me and my crib, as for me and my pad, as for me and my household, I don't want anyone to know what anyone else is doing, but Jesus is going to be lordship of my household, and we're going to acknowledge him, and we're going to give him praise and glory. And then you got to learn to skip warfare today. Now, we know we're never going to outgrow warfare, so what do we got to do? We got to fight. Now, we don't fight with guns and knives. We fight with spiritual weapons that have stood the test of time and eternity. Uh, but we don't want to get an unnecessary drama. We've got to stay, you know, uh, you know, we, we don't engage in conversations that you were not invited uh, to get in. I, I remember one of the generals, Bishop Archie, he says, you know, many years ago, you have to mind your own business. If people would mind their own business, you know, I, I try not to ever get involved in someone else's business. You know what? We, it's a full time uh, working on our own uh, self, building ourselves and encouraging ourselves. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. But make today a peaceful day. Uh, we decree and declare peace through the airwaves. There's so much fighting and so much arguing. Everybody's uptight. Everybody's ready to uh, just go there, wherever that is. But don't feed an argument of spirit uh, of those around you. Uh, insist on praying together with those who pursue points of disagreement. God is well known for honoring peacemakers. Now, of course, there's going to be issues and some things that we disagree on, even when it comes to uh, theological uh, standpoints. But a lot of them are secondary issues. Uh, but we do believe in the death, the burial, the resurrection, the ascension, and the exaltation. Uh, Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, verse number 18. I want to challenge every one of you to read a, a Proverbs a day. Because uh, there's a lot of businessmen and uh, entrepreneurs, uh, it will help you uh, even in your business and even in your affairs. It says, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceable with all men. Now, there's some folks that don't want no peace. Now, I can deal with crazy folks all the time in this Babylonian system. But when I come to the privacy of my home, I want peace. But there's peace that comes from Christ, which passes all understanding. This world doesn't know about that peace. It's called the peace of God, peace with God, and even peace with those that don't have the peace of God. And then, you know what? You got to triumph over the negative. You know, God has given us victory over the little petty stuff. Oftentimes, people sweat the small stuff. Think of each friendship as a beautiful flower in the garden of your life. You know, I have a garden, and with that garden, you know, you got to water it. You got to make sure the soil is right. Uh, you got to make sure those seeds are down and so forth. I got fruits and, and, and so forth, you know, and, uh, you know, you, you, if you don't, if you don't take care of it, you're not going to see the results you need. So don't let petty and insignificant differences, uh, you know, sap the beauty of those flowers. And a lot of times, a lot of great relationships I have seen destroyed because a misunderstanding or because there's other people around uh, certain leaders and, and they don't, they, they're they selfish, they're self-centered, and they don't like healing and reconciliation, and they speak the wrong kind of stuff in them because of their hidden agendas. Sometimes people get intent, uh, they get um, intimidated because, you know, we all have agendas. The, the real question is, what kind of agenda do you have? And sometimes people think, you know what, you're going to take my place or you're, you're, you're going to, uh, and we got to get rid of all of the stinking thinking and cast the devil out and no, listen, there's enough room for all of us. In Ephesians chapter four, verses 31 and 32, which is the heart of God, the nature of God, it says, let all bitterness and bitterness is worse than cancer. It will eat you up. Now, betrayal hurts too. It's external. Yes, you may cry and weep, but you get over it. But bitterness to me is worse because, again, it's internal and it will eat you alive. It, it, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking but put away from you with all malice. And notice what he says. He's talking to Christians, Bible-believing um, men and women of God. He says, be kind one to another. I think we got to learn that. We got to learn that in the brotherhood. We got to learn that uh, with one another. Be kind one to another, then tenderhearted. Tenderhearted means quick to forgive. We shouldn't have mafia mentality. We shouldn't uh, hold grudges. You know, when someone has mafia mentality, they, could, they can wash your feet. <laughs> I heard someone say, well, you know, the proof of washing your feet shows humility. That is absolutely not true. There's some folks that's got mafia mentality that can wash your feet, and, and they'll wash it with a smile on their face and, and ready to kill you. 
but that's not in the kingdom of God. Tenderhearted means we we forgive, we release, we let go. We don't hold on to grudges. It says tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. God has forgiven every one of us that are listening under the sound of our voice. And that's why we never want to be self-righteous. I believe people should have another opportunity, another chance. I think we should have grace. We should have mercy. You know, the way you extend mercy to someone is the way God's going to extend mercy to you. And then, you know what? Savage someone. Yes, savage someone. You are not the only person who's struggling today. There's a lot of people that are struggling. Others around you are hurting too. Every place you go, people are hurting. Be extremely attentive to the silent cries of someone close to you or who may be drowning in the ocean of helplessness. You know, permit God to make you uh, their life jacket. You know, I was in the store the other day. I think it was Walmart. I hardly, I don't shop, but I had to get a couple things. And um, there was a lady and it was her older mother uh, of different culture. And uh, I could tell she kept counting the things in the basket to see if she had enough to pay for. Well, I recognize that. I've been there, done that. (laughs) As they say, have the t-shirt to match it. And I was just kind of letting her go and then she was putting it back. And then I just kindly just said, you know what, ma'am, just whatever you don't have, I'll pay for it. And she looked like so shocked. I said, no attachments. I just want to bless someone. And that lady was so grateful and thankful. I shared that to say this, God wants to make us a blessing. Now, I haven't always been in a position to do that. And I was only $10 and maybe 11 cents. Uh, but some of you may be in a position to do that. Be kind. God wants to make us a blessing and not look for anything back. Glory to God. You know, every time I turn around, God's always doing those kind of things to me. It's called the law of reciprocity. And it works in the kingdom of God and even in the secular realm. Uh, in the, Let's be kind one another. Help someone. Maybe there's a senior that... Uh, you know, you can help and assist. Uh, go help them and uh, have someone uh, pick up their medication for them or something. Or maybe you know someone that can mow their lawn free of charge. We can help one another out. I always share about my first dog up in the northern state off Railroad Avenue. And they called them hobos back then. It's totally different than the homelessness we see today. It's to- they, these guys would like pass through the city. And he was very intelligent and he gave me that dog. And I'm so, if I seen him today, I would be kind and blessed him with him. He got, you know, that dog grew up, you know, and, uh, but uh, that was a very nice friend. Um, uh, Ephesians, um, uh, Galatians chapter six, rather. I'm keep thinking about Ephesians chapter six, uh, verse number 10, been teaching on um, prophetic strategies. Uh, dealing with warfare. But in Galatians 6 and 1, it says, Brethren, if a man be or woman be overtaken in a fall, check this out, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one. Maybe we're not seeing a lot of people restored. Maybe because we don't really have a lot of people that are in leadership that's really spiritually or where they should be. We, we've got to love people back to life. We come on, we've got to be able to, if someone's doing something wrong, don't blast them and talk about them, confront them in love so they can do better. I love that. You know, I'm that kind of, uh, you know, I need those kind of generals that's, you know, kind of in love straight in your face, but will help you and assist you. So it says, uh, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Now that's the key. Consider in thyself, lest thy also be tempted and then never complain about what you permit. A lot of times people uh, have adults in their house and they're very disrespectful or they take their cars. And you know what? I always tell them, you know what? If you permit it, you deserve it. I know that sounds a little unkind. I don't mean to be unkind, but never complain about what you permit. If you can stop it, stop it. Take the keys. If that person's being dishonorable and disrespectful, kick them out of your house. In love now. (laughs) <laughs> you know, your circumstances are not permanent. You have permitted your present circumstances or they would not exist. And so what you tolerate, you authorize to exist. And we got sometimes kick that devil out. Listen, let him know we, there's rules, there's regulations, there's a curfew. Uh, you have to be in by this time. You know, either accept the present without complaint or make decisions to use your faith and attract a miracle from God. In Mark chapter 9, verse number 23, one of my favorite scriptures, every time I would drive down, actually, uh, my brother would drive me down to the Bay Area. He speaks Spanish fluently. 
and um, as he has his cart and he's going. And we would always see on the billboard, it was a scripture for many years there. Um, uh, Mark 9 and 23, Jesus said, if thou can believe, all things are possible to them that believe it. Oh, that scripture. And I would take a picture on my cell phone of that scripture every single time like it was fresh because it was like God was saying uh, a fresh uh, manna word uh, to me every time I would go down there. And then, you know what? Start fertilizing friendships. Come on, you, you need friendships, you know. Uh, I, don't, I know people say that people come in your life that are seasonal, but at, at my age, I'm working on the second half and the, the people as far as friendships and relationships, I'm building lifetime relationships. Yes. Uh, in my life, that's where I'm at, but you gotta, I, I, I'm learning that you gotta fertilize those friendships. Don't permit the name of a friend to be disrespected in your presence. Now I, I won't tolerate that. You can't speak a negative word. Uh, people know me, you know, they know I may not volunteer anything, but I'm, if you ask me the truth, I'm not going to lie to you, but I'm not going to let you talk smack about any of my mentors. I love every one of them. All of them are unique, wired, different. <laughs> I may not even agree with everything uh, that they say, but you know what? They're still your mentor They're, and, and God has mentors in your life. Uh, and a lot of times we get frustrated because we find out our mentors are human. They have flaws and inconsistency, but they have experience and they have uh, uh, God has wired them with uncommon wisdom that we don't have, and we need to tap into it and get that from them uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. So don't observe a slanderous report about a friend unless he or she's present to defend themselves. You know, I remember someone was saying something about someone. I said, you know what, you're not, you will not discuss that person in my presence because they're not here to defend themselves. And they knew immediately. Uh, don't go there with <laughs> this brother. Hallelujah. And I told him who exactly what it was, who it was too. That wasn't snitching. It's called, uh, you know what? I'm, I'm just straight up. It's, it's, if you're down for somebody, you're down for someone. Or my grandparents used to say, you know what? Are you just, this, you know, love them with a long spoon. You don't have to say anything negative about them, but I'm not going to let you uh, just be dishonorable or disrespectful. Uh, in the name of the Lord. A good friend is worth any price, any effort, any defense. In Proverbs 18, verse number 24, it says, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And we know who that friend is. That friend will never abandon you. That friend will be there for you for the rest of your life. You know, uh, sometimes when you get sick and and uh, your body's not well, and, and your, your, your talents can't be used, people will say, hey, you know what, there's no use to that person, but God is not like that person. And then withdraw from negative and critical people. You know, a negative person is a troublemaker. I mean, always putting down someone, spread discontent, frustration, or distrust. You know, I, I don't hang around people that gossip and slander and promote strife. I can't associate with that kind of person because if they talk smack to about that person, believe me, when I'm gone, they're talking smack about me too. And then life is too precious. We got to build up people. We got to encourage people. So don't feed a relationship with such a person. And, and Proverbs chapter 26, verse number 21, it says, as coals are to burning coals and wood to fire, so is a contentious or negative uh, man to kindle strife. So again, we call it the law of association. You know, I try to hang around generals that are way more sharper than me, that can help me, assist me. I, will, I won't follow any general that don't have any battle scars. So I want someone that, that's been through something and uh, but don't look like what they've been through and to be able to help a protégés to be victorious on the journey. And then keep your word. In, in relationships are so important. Keep your word. We live in a time where folks don't keep their word. You got these folks that look you right now and just lie to you. You know, keep your word. If you can't do something, just say, I can't do it. Don't lie about it. Uh, carefully review and fulfill any vows, promise, or pledges you have made to anyone. Never promise what you cannot produce. Make things right with anyone you have wronged in the past. I've always tried to do that. You know, and uh, let me say this. And, and when, when people sow seeds into your life, appreciate them. Be thankful to them. Acknowledge them. I've never seen so many people that don't know how to receive 
uh, you know, when you're a sower, you know how to be a receiver also. In Proverbs 22 and 1, it says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. Now, I've heard people preach on that and, and make it seem like, well, you know, no one's ever going to say anything bad about it. No, if you're preaching truth, the demons and devils are not going to like you. Uh, you're not going to be the most uh, popular person. Uh, if Jesus was here today, he would not be the most influential leader. He would be he would be in the leadership, but it wouldn't be in that category. Uh, you know, when it says good name, that means to pay your debts. Let me set the record straight. You should have good credit. <laughs> Shouldn't be a man of God. You're not paying your bills. Credit's not. You know, sometimes, and I've had bad credit. And I know how it feels to have bad credit and good credit. But we have to be good. The idea is be good steward, good managers. Uh, of what God has graced us with. And then recognize that others increase your worth. The others in, in your business, in your enterprise, and even in, in the ministry. Uh, your best qualities will surface in the presence of good people. You know, uh, the prophetic, I mean, heavily comes out around me when I'm around excellence. I mean, musicians and people that are operating in excellence, I'm not talking about entertainers. I mean, I can naturally flow in those gifts. Uh, but treasure any friend who generates energy and enthusiasm towards your dream and goals. If they get excited about your dreams and goals, come on, you should value that. Go the extra mile to nurture and protect any God-given relationships. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 through 10, it says two are better than one. Why? Because I always talk about focus, but the downside about focus, sometimes you can't see everything. But if you have someone else with you, they can see things and they can counteract things and they can uh, really assist you and help you because they have a good re reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him who is alone when he falleth, for he hath not another to help him up. And that's why we need each other. Because sometimes th there's some things that will blow uh, the wind out of you. Sometimes you can even make bad decisions and end up in quicksand. And then you're like, who am I gonna? Who am I gonna talk to? And the devil will isolate you. And he and he to, and then he say, you know, I might as well just die. No, the devil is a liar. You're not going to spiritually die. You're not going to physically die, because you're going to tap into relationships that's going to help you, that's going to build you, that's going to encourage you, uh, in the name of the Lord. And that's why covenant is so important, and being in that partnership, not only with the Holy Spirit, but with the right relationships. And then make anger work for you. It's not wrong with being angry as long as it's the right anger. You know, most of us, you know, there's a righteous indignation when it comes to the enemy, how he's trying to destroy so many young lives and people. Anger is energy, so you got to harness it. Some anger can be devastating to your family, your career, or your life, but you can master it through prayer or channel it into a worthwhile project. Direct your anger towards your true adversary. A lot of people are fighting people. Your fight is not a fight with people. I see that all the time. You got, oh man, you got this political group fighting this group. You got this Christian group fighting this group. This, this. Listen, our fight is against a demon, a devil. Our adversary is Satan instead of those you love. Uh, in Ephesians 4 verses 26 and 27 says, be ye angry, but sin not, lest not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give what place to the devil. And then we got to learn love talk. Yes, you heard me correctly. We need to learn love talk. Ah, uh, you know, Jesus said, you will know my disciples, not by what cars they drive, not by what clothes they possess, not by their titles. And I do respect people's titles. I know we live in a culture where everybody calls each other first name. And, and I respect that too. But, uh, you know, it, if you're at the county jail, there's a captain, there's a sergeant, there's a lieutenant. If you're in the military, there's, you know, there's ranks. Uh, you know, uh, every you, you, you have a job, there's cool. So well, let's respect one another's positions and titles. Uh, but let's, let's learn to love talk. Jesus said, you'll know my disciples by the love that they exhibit and have one for another. In John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35, love talk breathes excitement into every relationship. If that's, and that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to walk in love. He wants us to live holy. And he wants us to win souls, building up lives, building people. And love talk is letting another know how much you care through your words or a gesture or giving a gift. 
You know, God doesn't want us to be indifferent or hostile. When you do that kind of stuff, God will spiritually spank you. I'm telling you, don't do that. Don't mistreat people and think you're getting over and you're trying to hurt. Because no, you don't. Don't do that. Let's love one another. Uh, and, and it's okay to say I love you today. Whisper it. Uh, write it on a note or or with a flower. Just say it. Uh, one to another. I thank God for the girls. The, the, I have two girls in my life, and they have really helped me in so many areas. I mean, they're they're tough, but they're loving, uh, you know. And uh, I have to let them know I grew up in a different generation, different culture. <laughs> you know, uh, you know. I don't think this generation could have probably took the way my mother talked and the way they were loving people. They just they responded. They talked totally different. But we have to be able to make those adjustments and change, even with the culture. We don't change the gospel, but we still stay in love. In the Song of Solomon, uh, chapter 8, verse number 7, many waters cannot quench love. Boy, this is <laughs> he had some conversation. Neither can the floods drown it. Oh, I'm over time. I know I'm over time. Can I, can I give you one more? I have about uh, 100 you know, dealing with relationships. Glory, I used to teach relationships years ago. I've kind of stayed away from it, but God says, you know what, you need to uh, put something out there. Become someone's bridge. Become someone's bridge. Someone may open up and share the dream of their hearts to you. You got to learn to listen. You got to learn to listen. Someone close to you may ache to hear an approving, encouraging words from you. Say it. You know, as an encourager, I've sent out encouraging words every single day. Sometimes two and three times a day, there is encouraging words going out uh, to uh, the elect of God. Someone may make a, a simple request that could unlock an important door uh, for them. Do it. it. I always tell people, if you can do it and it's not going to hurt you, be kind one to another. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 27, it says, Withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of thy hand. What? To do it. Because you may not always be in a position to do it. May not always be in a position to do it. You know, sometimes someone's they're, they having some family problems or someone's going to college and they need some help. If you're able to help them, do it. Because you may not always be in that position. And then nullify satanic attacks against your friends because all anointed men and women of God are under satanic attack. If you're not going through no satanic attack, it's probably because the devil's already possessing you. But those that are possessed with the Lord Jesus Christ, those that are possessed with the Holy Ghost, of course, there's challenges and difficulties. And your prayers can cancel satanic assignments against your family and friends. Call their name boldly before the throne of God today and make your request known on their behalf. Come on, we got to call out one another's name. We got to pray. You know, we were praying years ago. We used to go to early 5 a.m. prayer um, and uh, our men would open up and we would pray. Now, most of the time it's through church by phone, but we still have some of those solemn assemblies uh, special where we gather. We're trying to do things smarter and wiser. But expect your prayers of agreement to produce miraculous, miraculous results. I believe in the prayer of agreement. I believe in the supernatural. I believe that God can dry up cancer. I believe that God can do the impossible. I believe that God can do anything but fail. And I believe we've got to start speaking the promises of God, which is the word of God. In 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse number 23, says, Moreover, as for you, for me, God forbid, that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. And so, family, I want to challenge every one of you. Try to work out the differences. Some And, and, you, and talk, communicate. Sometimes you'll be surprised. You know what? People may think a little bit different than you. It's okay. Uh, I believe that openness and honesty breed trust. But if we can't be open and it's in honesty, you're not going to have any real authentic trust. You're not going to really have any real conversation or dialogue. And it's okay for us to agree to disagree and still uh, operate in the love of God. Let me say this, family, you know, because some of you may be sick and afflicted in your body. I want to let you know God is going to heal you. Yes. We said it, we spoke it. How can you say that? Well, Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask, or expect, or even imagine. This is the key, according to the power uh, that resides within you. The Bible also says 
and uh, John 14 and 14, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it. So family, I want you to dream. I want you to believe big. I believe that you're going to have some rich relationships. God's going to bring some restoration. God's going to bring some healing. God is going to do some great things uh, in your life like you've never imagined. The first relationship that you should always be concerned about, that personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you were to die today, because we're all going to die. I tell people that all the time. I don't care what position you have. I don't care where you stay. I don't care how much money you got, how much you possess. It's only been loaned to you. It's only been loaned to you. And when you die, God will loan it to someone else until the rapture of the Lord Jesus Christ come. But you know what? A relationship with Jesus is what it's all about. If you don't have that personal relationship, you may be a professional person, whoever you may be. You Listen, all you got to do is invite him into your heart. Why don't you pray this prayer with me? Say, dear God in heaven, forgive me of all of my sins. I believe that you died for my sins and that on the third day, God the Father raised you from the dead. And right now, Lord Jesus, I invite you into my heart as Lord and Savior. Dearly beloved, if you prayed that in sincerity and truth, you're going to spend the rest of your life with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now it's time to dive in the word that God will give you an appetite for the things of God. He wants to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. Yes, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And the brother does speak in tongues, according to Acts 2 and 4. Uh, and again, that's a secondary issue. Some people don't believe it. Uh, I speak in tongues, walking in the love of God. Uh, amen. Uh, with that mighty burning fire. And you know what? God wants you to enjoy the abundant lifestyle in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, God told me to tell you that he sees you in the future. And you look so much better than he sees you right now. Your best days are ahead. Your best weeks are ahead. Your best years are ahead. Come on. If the devil really could have killed you, he would have took you out a long time ago. Ah, but you're still here. Not because of your eating habits. Not because of this and that. Not because of your connections. You're here because of the grace of God, the mercy of God. Come on, sir. Why don't you give God the credit? Come on, sir. Why don't you give God the honor? It's not going to hurt you to open up your mouth and say, I thank the Lord, hallelujah, for keeping me and blessing me in the name of the Lord. Well, family, we love you. We're praying for you. Keep hope alive. Keep Christ Jesus as the object of your faith on an ongoing basis because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come unto the Father except he comes by. And pray for our leaders. Pray for our bishops, our apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, laborers in the vineyard, kings and queens in the marketplace. Let's pray for all people, all cultures, and all nationalities in Jesus' name. Love you much. Have Father, we just thank you so much. There's no name above your name. I wouldn't serve any other name. Yeah, sure, Mashiach. There's power in So much healing.